Hi and welcome. Thanks for watching the video. In the last video, we have seen uh, what is Azure Functions, the introduction to Azure Function, and what are the triggers and the binding. So, if you have not watched it, so the link is given in the description. So, in this video, we are going to see what is a timer triggered function. So, a timer triggered function is a type of Azure function which gets executed on a particular time interval. So, you can specify when the uh, Azure function should be executed. So Azure will understand the time to execute a function based on a scheduled expression. So this is also known as the cron expression, so which is provided in the following format. So if you see, there are six things that you need to provide in the cron expression, so which is a second, minute, hour, day, month, and the day of the week. So based on these uh, six parameters, you can uh, just define the expression which will tell Azure to execute the function. So let's take a few examples to understand when function gets executed. So in this example, if you see, if you need to uh, run your function every five minutes, so this is the expression that you will use. So this clearly indicates that for every five minutes uh, repeatedly, your function should be executed. The second example is if you want to uh, run your function uh, every day at, at uh, 7.30 a.m. So this is the expression. So if you see zero in the second, uh, 30 in the minute section and 7 in the hour section. So that's how you define the uh, cron expression. Now, if you want to uh, run your function at 9.30 a.m. every weekday, so this is the expression. If you see uh, 0, 39 and not, uh, the star in case of uh, day and the month, but in case of day of the week, you have provided 1-5, which means for every weekday, your function should be executed. Now there is a second option which is called as run on startup. So this option is basically for the local environment. So this is used for the debugging purposes where you are defining whether you should run your function on startup. So when you run your function, so it needs to be triggered. So whenever there is a trigger point, there is some event, then your function will be executed. Even if it is running, it may not be the, the case that your function gets executed. So your function app may be running but uh, it may not be triggered so it will wait for the uh, particular event to happen so if you don't want to wait for that to happen so on local if you set this uh, run on startup equal to true that means whenever function app is running you, it will be triggered automatically so this is basically used for the local testing so whenever you are deploying it on uh, production or the other environment so make sure that you don't have this settings true or you can even use uh, this particular setting only for the debug uh, purposes. Now we have seen what is Azure function, what are the uh, different types of triggers and the bindings in the last video. We have also got familiar with the timer trigger function. So let's create a, a timer trigger function and deploy it on Azure portal. So let's uh, try to create Azure function with trigger type as timer trigger. So I'll just create a new project here. So here I'll uh, create a new project uh, with Azure function as the template. Uh, and I just click uh, next. I'll name it as the timer triggered example. And click on the create. So now uh, you, you will get this window. So it will ask uh, what type of trigger you want to create. And also you can see at the top, uh, so you have option to choose either the .NET Framework or .NET Core. So I'll choose the .NET Core right for now with the function type, uh, function version as V2. And on the right hand side, uh, if you see, you have two things to mention. First is storage account. So whenever you create function app, so you need storage account because internally functions uh, use storage for operations such as uh, managing triggers, logging, etc. Or even the function execution. And the second option is a uh, schedule expression. So you can specify when your function should execute as this is a timer trigger function uh, or you can even change this uh, option later when you create a function. So for now, uh, I will keep it as is and I will choose the trigger type as the timer trigger. And let's create the function. 
So once the project is created, you will see that uh, you have got few lines of code created by template. Uh, in this template, you can see uh, one function with the timer trigger and with the name of the function uh, through the attributes that you have given. So this is the default code and one uh, statement of the log you can see here as well. So this is a very simple uh, code that template provides you. So here I'll change the name of the class and name of the function created by the template itself. So now uh, if we look at this code, there are two things. So the name of the function given to function name attribute, which will be your uh, function name. So which is a uh, timer uh, trigger demo. And there is a run method where you define configuration of the function such as what is the type of the trigger and uh, in this case which is a timer trigger and there is a cron schedule expression uh, which tell at what point your function should run so if you see uh, we are uh, passing this cron expression here or you can call it as a scheduled expression so we are just giving that so it tells you that every five minutes uh, this function should run and there is one statement of the log as well. So now uh, let's try to run this function locally So first you uh, need to understand that the uh, local dot settings dot JSON file is the file which is used as the configuration file for your local development So if you just uh, go to the solution explorer so you can see that local dot setting dot json so whatever configuration you are going to use uh, will be uh, taken from this particular file for your local uh, debugging purpose function key so when you first time run your application uh, so you might get this error while running it uh, so this function uh, will give you error of when you first time run uh, so basically this is because uh, as I said you need a storage account to run your function So where things are stored by function app for internal purposes So hence to run it locally you need storage emulator uh, which is which can be downloaded from the Microsoft uh, website so the link uh, for this particular uh, storage emulator is given in the description so assuming that uh, you have this particular storage emulator on your local setup uh, you will be able to run this application by using uh, f5 so now uh, let's uh, run this particular uh, function app so now the function is getting built uh, so you will uh, see this particular window when you run your function So now after five minutes uh, uh, we have hit the debug point uh, because if you notice here so this cron expression says that uh, after every five minutes we need to run this particular function so it is successfully hit now I'll just continue and if you noticed here then you can see the log when it is executed so next uh, run will be at uh, 330 uh, sorry 340 p.m. So that's how uh, the Azure function will run. So depending on your cron expression, you can uh, execute your function. So now I, I would like to mention a couple of things here. So first is uh, this is basically a timer trigger function, but for any kind of uh, function that you have. So there is one parameter that you can use here, which is known as uh, the run on startup. So if I just see, so the second parameter it expects is uh, the run on startup which is a boolean type so so if i just mention run on startup equal to true so that means whenever your function is uh, uh, running on local so it will execute so this is basically uh, used for you know debugging purposes or wherever you are you know uh, executing this function locally so make sure that whenever you are deploying this function so it does not affect your uh, uh, deployed version of the function so this is basically only for the development uh, on local so this can be used and second thing is uh, this is basically hard-coded uh, cron expression that we have used here but uh, if let's say we have to change this cron expression uh, tomorrow so 
we should not uh, have a need to you know change the code so to make it uh, you know configurable we can use uh, this setting so I'll, i can give any name here can you and uh, so this percent sign on either side uh, will tell a uh, function to you know take this value from the configuration so now as we are running this on local so this will keep uh, the local settings active so you can you know mention so now uh, i have this configuration from the uh, local dot settings expression so now uh, we have uh, all the configuration that we need uh, in the uh, app settings so now we don't have any hard coded cron expression present over here so i'll just uh, run this example so now as we have run on startup equal to true so it uh, executes the function as we run it uh, so it, it does not uh, take uh, timer schedule into the consideration as we have run on startup equal to true so now if i just click on continue so yeah so it has already logged the particular statement and uh, if we remove this particular line So now in this case we don't have run on startup equal to true so what it will do is it will take the timer schedule from the configuration which is defined as to run this function every three minutes so let's try with this approach So now we have a uh, use timer trigger which is executing a uh, function every three minutes so let's wait for the function to hit now uh, the function is uh, executed uh, the timer is hit so now we have this particular debug point uh, present so so that's how you can you know use a uh, schedule expression uh, and you can get the value from the app setting instead of hard coding it in the code so whenever you want to change it next time so you can uh, just change the configuration without you know changing the code so that's the benefit of uh, using this particular cron expression from the configuration file so now i have created this function app uh, uh, so if you are not sure how to create a function app so in the previous video i have covered this uh, scenario where introduction to azure function uh, we have covered this uh, scenario to create a function app and create a functions uh, from the portal and also from the visual studio as well so now if i click on uh, function so there are no function as of now in this function app so we are not going to create uh, functions from this window so as we saw earlier so we can create functions from portal itself so there also you can you know, add the code edit the code uh, if it is a simpler one you can just uh, do it from the portal itself but for now uh, what we will do is we will try to deploy this particular function app uh, from the visual studio so to do that uh, you first need to you know get the published profile so if you click on get published profile so you will get the, this particular published uh, setting file so that will be useful when you deploy the code from uh, visual studio so now uh, i'll just move to visual studio so now if we continue our example previous example uh, so we can deploy this particular function from the visual studio so if i click on publish so i hope you have already downloaded the get published profile So I'll just import the profile from here and uh, whatever file I have downloaded from the portal I'll just import that so now I after the uh, file is imported you can just click on publish so now it will uh, deploy this particular function into your function app from where you have downloaded the published profile 
so now the publish is succeeded so we'll just try to go to portal and see what it shows over there so if i just click on functions so now you can see the timer trigger demo is present so after the deployment is successful you will see the function here itself so if i click on this particular function and if i click on integration So you can see the trigger type as timer and uh, the name of the function but uh, nothing in the output and the input section because we have not defined anything in the bindings so uh, it is to be noted here that we have not created anything from the portal but what we did is we uh, just uh, deployed the code from visual studio and it has identified the particular function based on the attribute that we have given which is a timer trigger attribute now if you just click on the code plus test so you will see this function.json file where you will see uh, all the configuration so if you see the type which is a timer trigger and the schedule uh, that we have given so it will try to get this particular schedule from the application settings and run on startup we have not specified that that means it's a false and to it is to be noted that whenever you deploy as, as your function so it should be false and the name over here so that's how uh, you can deploy the code and in the monitor section as we discuss you will see the logs of the uh, whenever function is triggered so you will see the logs over here so you can you know troubleshoot uh, which call uh, cut failed so right now we have not uh, invoked any function here so you will not see any entry so now if you just uh, click on the configuration section so you will see that uh, the setting value that you use in local dot settings can be present here uh, whenever you deploy the function now if i just click on new application setting so this is the value that my function will be using so i'll just click on ok and save so now we have added uh, one more configuration value in the configuration section of this function app so now let's go to overview section and just restart the function so now as we uh, change the configuration of this function uh, so we have added a uh, timer schedule uh, entry here so if you see the function will run every two minutes so timer schedule so which uh, we have added as a part of the code so it will read from the configuration and now it's already uh, two minutes of uh, after we you know restarted the function so if we just click on uh, functions here and we just try to go to this function and if we just monitor this so you will see the entries when the function was invoked so if you see so once the function was invoked so this is the success count so if it is failed then you can see this here so that was all about the timer trigger function so i hope now you are uh, aware of uh, timer triggered function how to use it how you can deploy it uh, and based on uh, some time interval expression that you can set through the configuration. Thank you.